Welcome back to Star Wars Week here at Capes and Tights, a comic book and pop culture podcast where we were talking Star Wars, and now we're on episode three, Revenge of the Sith, yep. Star Wars. Uh, and yeah, just to start off, Adam, I I want to say this is my favorite of the prequel trilogy, but I also want to say it's my least favorite of the prequel. I, I don't know. Ooh, there is no there reason why. Like, there's no, like, jump yep. out at you reason why I think this. But, like, there's moments where I'm like, this movie rocks. And then there's moments where I'm like, this is horrible. And I don't know. I can't pick them out. Like, it's not like, I don't know if it's just a feeling to have that, but it was, uh, it's definitely, it fits in the trilogy. I think yeah. it fits the prequel trilogy, uh, but it's a different, it's different. 17 years ago, buddy. I know. 17 I, years ago. I'm with you. I, 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 it's not perfect, but no, man, it, it's, it's a fun one. And one place we could, I just, we could, is, yeah. man, Disney's re doing of the digital scenes yeah. in that movie holy crap mm -hmm. that makes that alone makes it makes so it much yes better. yes like, yes this is the highest rated one out of all the prequels it's 7.6 yeah. on imdb and 80 percent uh critic rating on rotten tomatoes so this is the most liked of the yep. three I, in a generic consensus it. of things uh obviously written and directed by george lucas still produced by rick mccollum yep. again john williams of the music again it rebounded a little bit on the box office, episode two was like 600 and something million. This made just under 900 million. So it did rebound in that sense, two hours long, perfect length. Uh, Ewan McGregor's obviously back, Natalie Portman, all those guys are back. Um, it, there isn't much new people in this movie, really. I mean, there's, no, there's not. It's the, basically a, an extension of the second one. And it's it really also is. placed close to the second one, I believe. It's like right after yep. the second one, basically. So um, well, I just put a note down here. The biggest thing I thought was the coolest thing, and I only saw it when I watched this quick recap movie because I watched this the beginning of the week. And so I was like, my memory is not what it used to be. And I was like, I should watch something this yep. to refresh my memory is the dark versus the light. When the dark stuff happens, this dark side stuff happens, the sets are dark. Yep. When the light stuff happens, the sets are light. So like They're at the light. end, when, when Natalie Portman gives birth to Luke and Leia, it's bright white light. Yep rooms and then a flash to like a darth vader scene and it's dark gritty right. dark black stuff so i was like oh that's interesting that i never really noticed until i watched that recap video where they put them basically it was like four minutes long it's like bam 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 bam, bam and saw yep. the difference between light and dark which is pretty cool obviously it was most likely on purpose but oh of course yeah um, um yeah so i, I generically great movie i, I think yep. it's it definitely stands out again i think there's moments where it stands out better than the other ones um, but it's still part of that prequel Absolutely. trilogy, which I think falls a little bit short to the original trilogy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I got to say, after watching this one, I still think Phantom Menace is like, is awesome. I really mm -hmm. like Phantom Menace. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, it, like this one's like, I, I think both every time we do these, it's so hard to jump in. They're so old, like mm -hmm. to talk about these movies and like what works and doesn't. But I, I, I think the hardest part is I have to say Hayden Christensen really sucks yes. again. And I always want to say like, you know, though it's bad direction and like maybe he'll recover in this new series, but like, it's so bad. Mm -hmm. The Padme relationship with Anakin, if you could cut that out of revenge of the Sith, I bet they'd get a above 80%, mm -hmm. 85% review. So Absolutely. I figure I come right, right out of the gate with Hayden Christensen. I just can't defend him, man, no matter how hard I try. It's so It's bad. so funny, too, because it's like people always talk about all oh, thinking about a relation and a character people hate is Jar Jar Binks is like, yep. he did what he was directed to do, mm -hmm. but isn't bad at what he does. He just does this character that was written into the thing. I just think people shit on Jar Jar Binks and, and, and uh, what's his name? Anthony, yep. um, no, Anthony Daniels, but who is it? Um, I forget his name. The actor who plays Jar Jar Binks. Yes. Uh, they crap on him more than they do Hayden Christensen and Christensen was worse. It was like, he was bad in the character. I just, it, there's something about it. that just irks, yeah. irks me. And maybe that's on like somewhat on purpose. So we don't like Darth Vader, but like, he's just not good at the scene when he finds out she's pregnant. Oh my God. It's like, he wants to punch her and then immediately is happy about it. It was this weird. Like, I don't know if I, if, if, if Taylor told me we were pregnant with Nova and I did that reaction at the beginning, she'd probably slap me. And it was, yes. it was bad. And I just think that that's, and then it continues on the whole, the whole thing about Hayden Christensen is just, I don't, I don't, I don't know. The only way I like Darth Vader in this movie is the fact that they actually use James Earl Jones's voice at the very end. <laughs> Which was really cool. Uh, it, oh, and it's, it, uh, 
Ahmad Best so that Jar Jar Best. Can yes, get yes, his, yes. Can, no, I had to look it up so he can get his credit. Well, he gets his credit. So here's the deal. We talked about this in episode one review or talk discussion is yep. had a bunch of lines, bunch of camera time in one, definitely diminished in two. He had, I have it down here in my fun facts. Jar Jar Binks is one of the most controversial characters in Star Wars, but in this movie, he only speaks two words. He says, excuse me, when he bumps into center, the senator while entering a building behind Palpatine. That's the only words he has in this entire thing. And it's just insane to think that they like they didn't just basically kill him off. Like George Lucas is like, no, I'm standing my ground on this. He's going to be in this movie. But I'll, I'll be okay with just having him say, excuse me, and not say a thing. It was very beginning of the movie. First 15 minutes of the movie, and then you don't see him again, basically, the rest of the movie. You might see him as an auxiliary character in the background somewhere, but that's it. That's not, uh, it's pretty funny to see that they slowly removed him from the movies. Too bad. Yes. I'm Ahmed Best, but whatever. <laughs> and then yeah. I'll start off with, Adam, the Empire would be absolutely fine if they just changed the R2-D2 port that he uses to control their systems, yeah. like upgrading from USB to USB-C. Like literally, yeah. they just changed the design of the thing, a little faster port. And so R2-D2 controls and does and opens doors and does shit that on yeah. everything ever, that if they just, okay, upgrade time, and they change the port to something else, a different shape, a different control, yep. the Empire would still be in control of everything. <laughs> well, this is the thing you and I always joke about, right? It's like, it's like art in all of the movies. It's R2 that saves everybody yes. every time. And like, really, it could be the Skywalker saga or it could be the R2 saga because literally in every clutch moment, R2 is there zapping somebody with electricity, flying around in his jetpack. And- yes. I think this here's the deal. You know, you have the fan made movies, uh, the fan yep. things and all that stuff, the recuts and stuff like that. They should just do one. It's called Star Wars, like droids, but it's just literally yes. all the droid stuff and yep. say how much the droids are actually important to this whole yep. thing. And like at the end of the movie where he's like, wipe the R2 unit or I'm sorry, C3 unit. Wait, and he goes, huh? And it's like, uh-huh. those two characters are actually like big characters. Cool. It, it's just funny to see that they literally, it's like the stupidest thing of small things in movies, the, like the oversights yep. of if they changed to one small thing, then yep. things would not be the way it was I before. have said it before. I'll say it again. I still think a Star, Star Wars droids like absolutely would be the f- greatest thing ever. And if anybody's listening, that's where you bring Jar Jar Binks back in mm-hmm. because that would be, freaking hilarious i mean having the c-3po banter with jar jar binks and kind of almost breaking the fourth wall about the jar jar binks yeah. stuff like i would be in on that all day long i would love a conversation between the two of them for like like 15 20 minutes and then just have everybody the whole like they're having a conversation at the bar right it's loud it's at the cantina they're loud it's out there music is playing and so on and so forth they're having a conversation you're zoomed in on them and then slowly they zoom back and the entire bar the music stopped playing People are stopped talking and it's just people listening to the conversation, the stupid conversation they're having because of how dumb both of them can be, that it would be hilarious to see that everybody's just like, what is going on over here? (laughs) Or imagine like done as a comedy where you have like R2, but you never do subtitles to translate it. You have Jar Jar Binks, C-3PO, but then just because throw in a Wookiee character that's regular and you never translate that, that would be hilarious to have two of the characters never have subtitles. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, so I, I, and that's the thing is, if you think about when we make, when I made the graphics for this, this episode and things, you, you put in uh, Hayden Christensen as, as obviously uh, Anakin Skywalker and you put in yep. uh, like Han Solo um, and, and not Han Solo, um, um, Obi-Wan. And those are the people you think about, but again, droids are big in this as well. Cause obviously C-3PO yep. and R2-D2 have a pretty big role in this as well count count dooku um mace windu there's there's this characters in there that that definitely have bigger or better honestly better characters that i'd rather watch i'd rather watch a mace windu uh at a movie than i would yep. hayden, Christ- hayden christensen playing anakin skywalker again <laughs> kind of movie but i also love in the opening scene you know they're in the battle the the, the yep. civil they yep. also call it a civil war but it's, it's an entire universe there should be another name for that because you have like world war it's based around the a war between yep. A war, and then you have civil war, which is like right based in the same country. Like this is an entire universe, so it really can't be in my mind yep. a civil war because it's an entire universe that's right. having this war. So I understand why they would call it that, but in my mind, I was like, can we call it a universal war or something? Because like yeah, it yeah. seems a little bit different. But they're still using the freaking. You and I have Bluetooth headphones in, right? The yep. technology they have droids and they have artificial intelligence and and, yep. and 
think, and they're using a headset that has a little microphone That's that comes down. Why Star Wars <laughs> is awesome. That's what I love. It's like what you because it envisions like technology going where people thought it might go in the 70s. Yes. And so nobody's thinking of like internet or computers, but like hover cars and like Bluetooth headphones. Heck yeah. Like you said, <laughs> artificial intelligence. Like there's this all this stuff, and I'm just picturing the like the the 50, 60 year old man driving a truck with the old school headset on and the microphone that comes oh. down like that, and that's what they have in these ships. And it's it's wireless, yes. so I do say there's no connectivity wire, but it still has the microphone that comes down here. And I'm like, why would you need well, to have a microphone? Wouldn't it just be Bluetooth in your entire ship too? Couldn't you just speak and hear? Yes. <laughs> Well, and it's it's perfect because it's Revenge of the Sith. But like, let's yes. talk about one of my other favorite ones, which is General Grievous. <laughs> like, he there's like weird little scraps of an actual person yes. inside this this robotic frame, and like that's so different from like you said, like the normal sci-fi. Like General Grievous is a weird character, like a force, but he's not force sensitive, right? This is the yes. big thing. Yes. He's actually the, like the the robot simulates mm -hmm. or the cyborg simulates it, but. Like that's the goofy tech of Star Wars. Like his lungs oh, are in there. Yes. That's why he coughs. But that's the funny thing. So here's the deal. So I wrote, love the coughing of General Grievous. This is one of notes I have here. Yep. Love the coughing of General Grievous. Because it's funny. You very rarely see some sort of cyborg or or robot or AI, some sort of fake thing coughing. Because yep. it's like you don't think they would cough. So it has some sort of rep respiratory system in there. But yet that he could just breathe in space. Because he leaves the ship at one exactly. point. And just goes yeah. up. So he has a cough, but he can also breathe so i don't like that to me was like that doesn't work together it's, it's, no, it's, and they still have his eyeballs yes it's, it's, it's the whole thing i love the fact that coughing because it's funny because it sounds like he's not doing well um yes. but again it was funny how that worked we were watching um uh we're watching futurama and there's an episode where fry goes they go to the special city and they have this guy who like trying to uh, hawk off like um uh organs and he's like, do you want to want some gills? And Fry's like, I'd love some gills. That'd be amazing. Why would I? I can't breathe underwater with my thing. So he goes, cool. Uh, would you, you don't need your lungs anymore if you have the gills, right? He's like, well, that makes sense. He goes, okay, we'll take your lungs down. We'll install the gills in a couple of weeks. And all I can think of is like General Rivas coughing and, and this, this, yep. this cyborg that's still dying and stuff like that. It was just kind of funny how, how that came up. And I'm glad you brought that up about uh, um, General Rivas because I think he's a badass looking character. It just was kind of funny to me always that he coughs. And then he could breathe. I, in space. I think General Grievous is a great character. I think mm. it's the, one of the most ridiculous scenes, but I, this is like, I like Revenge of yeah. the how it does yes. it. But like when he pulls out all four of the <laughs> lightsabers, I mean, that is just kind of a, at the time a great little inside joke because of now, of course, we're all used to everybody yeah. having lightsabers. But remember that Phantom Menace, like we'd never even seen the double lightsaber before. Correct. So this guy having four of them is just like, a great little inside joke too in Star yes. Wars. It is because like you think it's hard enough to get one sky lightsaber yeah. to let alone have four and have them all be matching colors too. They don't even like it's not yep. even like you grab random ones from random Jedi. They're all like they're all the same color, which is kind of funny as well. Um the battles, the like, lightsaber battles in this thing are awesome. I do say I have a couple of notes they're on great. here, like the 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 Yoda battle, the uh Han Solo or Han Solo, I keep saying Han yep. Solo, Obi Wan Kenobi battle, uh, uh General Grievous with them. They're all awesome. Um, the the did you know that Count Dooku, uh, Christopher Lee wasn't actually even present for the fight scene between Count Dooku and Anakin Skywalker. Uh, he is a stuntman oh. performed all the choreography for those. That's when his face is eventually shown, they actually superimpose and digitally recreate uh, uh, Christopher Lee's face over Count Dooku is the, the stunt person. So he's actually doesn't even film yep. any of that. I don't even know yeah, if he was funny. on set. He wasn't even on set for any of it, which is pretty funny uh, because you don't need to. And think about it, that's 2005. Right. So if you watch that, I didn't know that until I looked it up online. And that's 2005. We were talking, we, we were talked about Boba Fett is the, the uh, you know, yeah. Luke Skywalker being there and superimposed there. They were doing yep. this back in 2005. They were head of the game on it. And it saved the actor from being on set, yep. which is pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I wrote uh, just to go back because I, I saw it on the line here is to go back to the whole Anakin Skywalker, uh, Hayden Christensen kind of sucking at it is the corniness of the I'm so in love. No, I'm so in love with you. Oh, and, my uh, God. I forgot to but, mention, I wanted to, before I forgot, I wanted to bring that up, how horrible that is. 
Well, and to fast forward it, because we have to, it's the only way it shows you how ridiculous it is. Like they do the, I missed you. I missed you. I haven't seen you forever. Oh, my love is burning for you. Whatever. I'm making all that yeah. up. Yeah. And then we don't, we don't see anything forever. Yep. And then the next time we see him, like Padme is like, no, I can't yeah. go where you're going. And they're done and they break up. And it's like the least invested relationship ever. Like I even watching it, you're like, you two have don't you've never even been around each other, which I guess is part of the point. But it's part of the point. But also, like to be back on the line I have on belief is how does no one know about his relationship with Padme? Like, oh. how is it possible that there's a force out there? There's the Jedi, there's all these people, and yeah, Obi Obi Wan's finally like, Oh, yeah. by the way, I know now. Like years and into do, the relationship, they're married now, she's pregnant, like they're making out in the lobby of whatever giant building they're in. Like and no one knows about this. Like, come yeah. on. Like that's the that's one of those things that could that's one of the those are the moments where I'm like, yeah. this movie sucks. But then there's other moments like the the the, the uh, Jedi battles and all these things that like honestly when they say execute order sixty six kind of breaks my heart a little bit, but like it's a great oh, yeah. montage of scenes of all of a sudden I know where people turning on the Jedi, fighting with the Jedi, then turning on the Jedi basically. It, it was it was fascinating to see yep. NASA moments where I'm like, oh my god, this movie's amazing. And then there's the scenes that, and I guess most of them are the ones scenes with freaking Hayden Christensen in it. So that might just say that. But I love this movie if you just take out Hayden Christensen. And honestly, I like Natalie Portman too, but she wasn't that great in this movie either. He's replaceable as well in this yeah. one. Yeah, it's true. But my thing was, and I am still though committed to. I think I love that Hayden Christensen's still going to be Darth Vader, yeah, Kenobi. And I still 100% hold out that I think he can do an excellent job at it because I still think direction was a big problem there. But I mean, yeah, how old is he? I mean, just, he was also young, right? I mean, technically yes. he was a younger dude. So I think now that he's older also, he probably has more maturity to it. I mean, me, us doing this podcast 15 years ago probably wouldn't have been as good as we could do it now. And we still suck at it. So it, it's, it's, it's a progressive thing for people when they get yeah. older and mature to be of able course. to act better and stuff like that, even if he hasn't been in much. It's still like he just has a maturity to him, probably taking yeah. it a little bit more serious than he did then. It, uh, even though and I always, anyway, as but. we that documentary we always talk about. I mean, George Lucas didn't want to direct this, yeah. and he, like he was asking friends like Ron Howard to do it, and they were like, "No, you should do it." So I like he wrote it, he directed it. Now we have to live with that. Thanks, Ron Howard. And well, I mean, Ron but, Howard got his got his somewhat yeah, take he when he we did Han yeah, Solo did. or the Solo series we or took over the Solo movie that's a whole other thing yep. we can talk about but um the it, it, yeah so like I, I don't know the thing that would have sucked so we obviously know like obviously a episode one we had a different Anakin because he was younger yes. but episode two it almost would have been weird it would have been horrible for everybody to recast him for episode three like they probably would not they couldn't have done that nowadays like people would as much as people yeah. shit on that, that that whole prequel series trilogy yep that if they recast Hayden Christensen as someone else to play Anakin, it would have been worse. The only way they could have fixed it, they could have fixed it is sped it up in a sense that he got his Darth Vader yeah. suit earlier. Yes. So you could put anybody yes. in there and just cut him out exactly. of the movie. But, but then it, the end of the movie would have been way too soon. There's a lot that does oh God, happen yeah. in this movie for Anakin. Like honestly, Anakin's transformation from, you know, doesn't know what he wants to Darth Vader and what right. happens at all in this movie, really. I mean, he has questions in movie two, but like, yep this movie if you didn't even watch the other two you could get a sense of darth vader in this movie alone absolutely so which is good i like that but uh and as the, always too i mean the, go ahead. the the no i was just gonna say like I, I said it in the beginning too but i i really just throughout the whole movie was surprised by how much the updated visuals yeah added to this movie because the thing is the the action scenes are actually really fun and the mm -hmm. space combat scenes are really fun. And I didn't realize how much my brain just kind of started checking out with the old CGI and was like, this is fun, but like, this looks like a video game yep. now. So I don't think I'd ever watched Revenge of the Sith since they've done remastering and updating. And man, that like, that made that movie so much better for me throughout. I would say this is one of the only, like the one of the few positive touch-ups they've done yes. on Star Wars because when they touch the old 100%. one up and they, they change it up 100%. too much, this is actually yep. done well. I think it's really good on that. And in, 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 in like I mentioned, we'll talk, I think the plan in my our schedule somewhere is before the uh, Andor series on Disney Plus, we'll watch Rogue One. And oh, yeah. I've always joked about Rogue One being the most war-centric Star yep. Wars movie and it doesn't even have the word Star Wars in it. Yeah. This might be up there with that when you open up and they're actually physically in battle in the space. 
Yep. It's like, okay, this is Star Wars. Like this is like the, yep. the whole thing is based around this, which is really cool. And it gets you, when you go into a theater and you sit down and you watch it, you're like, this is what I'm here for, which is really, really, really yep. cool to see that. And I'm telling you right now, you and McGregor stole this entire, like this, like episode yep. two and episode I'm three. I'm glad sure. you went there. Yeah. Yeah. And because he, he he's, he's the Obi-Wan Kenobi. Like I, the well, old Ben Kenobi from the original trilogy is never going to be in my, like even no. my purview. And this is Obi-Wan to me. I think that might be one of the most important points to bring up. Cause I remember even when this came out, even with revenge of the Sith at the time being like, uh, I was more disappointed than I thought yeah. I would be. But I remember telling people like for you and McGregor becoming Obi-Wan alone, mm -hmm. I can suffer through the, the, the prequels. Yeah, because yeah, it, he stands out even when he's giving like really poorly directed hammy lines, he pulls it off. I mean, yes. it, where it's cheeky, it's funny. Like that's why he's the big meme king of Star Wars because he somehow makes he he makes it work. Like yes, it, it, and so yeah, and that, that, you know what you see him he him in the uh, Jedi Council part, him in the battles, they all are on equal playing field for me in his acting. He can he can do the drama. Uh, yeah. uh, talking, just having discussions, lightsaber battles, flying the jets, like doing all that stuff. It's just as a whole rounded out character. And that's why I'm really, really now this watching this movie makes me really excited to see yep. Obi-Wan on Disney plus. Cause it's like, we're going to get more and it's be focused solely on Obi-Wan Kenobi plus the peripheral yep. stuff around him. But it's, it's really good. Speaking, speaking of the Jedi council, I love how the Yoda remotely talking is like zoom calls for nowadays. Like they yep. just like are there, like, okay, I can't be there now. I'm off world, but let's have a conversation and we're going to just have a quick Zoom meeting. Um, yep. So and so and so and so are going to be present, but Yoda and someone yep. else are not going to be. And they just zoom in, which yep. is awesome. <laughs> like Zoom, they sh Zoom should have had some sort of, if this movie came out pre, it would have been some sort of product placement, like brought to you by Zoom yes. or something like that. <laughs> but um, like it's, uh, it, what, it's I... um, what is it called? It's a, um, it's not a hologram. Physio. Yeah, hologram. Yep. Um, before I lose the thought with you were talking yeah. about Obi-Wan that really stuck out in this rewatch was, uh, and it's great because it's continuity and I'd never thought about it. I was shocked at how aggressive of a fighter Obi-Wan is. Yes. So in almost every scene in all three of these movies, the Jedi take defensive stances. They, the second stuff starts, he starts cutting limbs off. Like in every, like he will cut, you will cut your, you'll cut you in half. He'll cut your legs off. Think to the original Star Wars in the bar. Like yep. the guy starts running his mouth and he cuts his arm off. Yeah. Yep. So I'd never noticed how well and it, you and McGregor, I think is a big part of it managed to keep that going where you're like, he's, he's like the warrior poet. He's like, he's soft-spoken, but the second the fight starts, like limbs are flying. Like, and I love that. He's the winter soldier program in MCU <laughs> where it's like, you just say a statement and he goes from this like calm yep. collective person to like killing everybody and like chopping limbs yep. off. Speaking of chopping limbs off, that's like a not it's like the star wars it's upon star wars upon star wars that everybody has to lose a hand and this movie two yep. people lost hands and actually technically there was two lost hands and darth Vader yep. lost his other hand and his legs so it's like limbs yep. are no your limbs are not safe in the you know, star thing, wars universe i don't know if you noticed i had to google it because it was weird i'd never noticed it in all the times i've watched it is that only when obi-wan fights grievous he always points two fingers at him he has his lightsaber in one hand and he has two fingers pointed at him and he never does that with any other character huh. in star wars even in the animated series maybe grievous so i looked it up but they were saying the the stance is based off of like uh i think it's a chinese sword fighting technique and that stance is supposed to focus all of your any energy into just sword fighting and i'm thinking he's fighting grievous who doesn't have force powers but he has yes. four swords so he switches into a fully fencing based mentality, basically. I'd never noticed that. And it, it's totally 100% true. It's only with Grievous that he switches into that two finger thing. It's totally cool. I'm loving the fact that I, if you'll ask me my favorite Star Wars character over and over again, I'm like slowly, slowly, slowly starting to think that Obi Wan Kenobi is my favorite oh, yeah. Star Wars character. And again, old Ben Kenobi is, it was, that's a, a fault of the first movies that like yeah. no one knew that old Ben was Obi Wan. Like, come on. Yep. Again, with the new uh, movies, I had myself 100% convinced that the reveal was going to be that Ray was uh, Obi Wan's granddaughter. Yes, that again, and, and 
I was certain of it. I was telling everybody. I was certain. I guess. Of it. I guess anything would have been better, but uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> but I, well, I can't. I, we'll get into that too. I think we're going to get out of uh, yeah. that in a couple of months too. But I think that uh, yeah, that Ewing and McGregor. I, I honestly I can't win awards because like the movie wasn't to the point where award winning, but he won awards for the movie. If you think about it, I think yes. you were giving out awards, best actor in the movie, best whatever scenes. It, Obi-Wan and, and Ewan McGregor definitely did all of that as well. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and the, the, you know, and then the music again, I think there's never been a music on a, a Star Wars movie that hasn't been good. John yep. Williams kicked ass on this one as well. Yeah. Um, and so, a, a, a key part of oh, good. No, I was going to say one more thing I, before I forget. I love with Obi-Wan too, is I think we all know if you've read your history of Star Wars, Alec Guinness hated Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And he used to like, you know, he give, would give, was it a kid an autograph and be like, yeah. I'll give you an autograph, but please stop watching Star Wars. <laughs> so I, I I love that Obi Wan has because I love Alec Guinness's performance. Everybody yeah. does, but I, I love that you and McGregor is slowly becoming Obi Wan because he loves the character of Obi Wan. So it's really appropriate that it's becoming him and not Alec Guinness. Yeah, and it's funny thing with Alec Guinness part is like if he were to like, like uh, we just Bangor Comic and Toy Con happened a couple of weeks ago that, that, when this episode airs, and it's kind of funny you see people like. Um, Jim Winburn, who did uh, uh, stunts for like Halloween and Tron and, and uh, um, Escape from New York, they're on the con circuit now because he's trying to pay for his retirement yep. and all this stuff. And you'd think that Alex Guinness would be the guy who would be like at these cons as Obi Wan because yep. basically, I mean, tell me another movie off the top of your head that Alex Guinness was really, 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 really known for that he could actually right. use to promote at cons like this. There isn't. And so, like, or I can't think of one off the top of my head, at least. And so it's kind of funny that, but Ewan McGregor is known for so many different roles. Like, obviously, if he goes to a oh con and signs autographs, yeah. it's going to say Obi Wan Kenobi from Star Wars, along with the other stuff that he does. But it's just kind of funny. I mean, you think about an older dude going to a con, he'd have to be known for some, he'd be known for being old Ben or Obi Wan from the original yeah. trilogy. And he doesn't want to be that anymore. It's the same, it's the same thing, though. It's like, it's just probably just tiresome. Like, the old bands that want, like, play the hits, play the hits, play Freebird. Yeah. It, and they don't want to because they've been playing exactly. their entire career. But like, guess what? I wouldn't know who the hell you are if it wasn't for Obi Wan Kenobi in nope. the original trilogy. So at least I would know you and McGregor from other movies. <laughs> so it's safe to say that we're excited about the new Kenobi series. Yes, uh, I'm. I'm so like uh, you have like. Oh, I'm so 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 excited about that series too. And by the way, just so everybody knows, Alec Guinness is not going to be doing. Um, cons i think he died a number of years ago <laughs> he's he's quite dead yeah yes <laughs> um uh i think he is yeah, i'm pretty sure he is but i don't know I, I was trying to look it up but i can't figure that out uh i want to say he died like a long time ago i want to say 2000 yeah 2000 that, that sounds about right so he didn't actually even have to see someone else play obi-wan kenobi <laughs> right because no 99 he would have saw no uh, maybe he would. I don't know. He would have been on his deathbed anyway. But yeah, uh, back to back to normal conversation here. Not about when someone dies or what they saw. Exactly. Um, the ex. I wanted, I wanted to touch on the execute order sixty six. So yep. the sad montage of all the Jedi being killed. Uh, the funny thing is, you actually get another view of that in Bad Batch. You get the exact same like animated part yes. of it, but you get the exact same but a different side of it with execute order sixty six and the um. Bad Batch group doesn't know what's going on. They don't understand yep. what's happening. And so it's just a weird thing that you think about the first three movies or the first two and a half parts of the movies yep. is Jedi, 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 Jedi. And now, like, if, I can just imagine sitting there in the theater not knowing anything about anything yep. and going, wait, they're killing all the Jedi? That doesn't make any yeah. sense to me because I remember I know Jedi. There's Jedi in the first movie or the yep. um, regular sequel or regular trilogy, and they're just killing them all. Like, it's just weird to think about that this kind of a characters would be killed off in it. However, right. no, no really reputable characters die. Do you notice that? It's not like, I mean, there's characters in that you know and you've known yep. from the series, but it's not like you get fall in love with an Obi-Wan style character no. who's a main character no. where they just go, okay, he's not going to, he's obviously not in the, I mean, Mace Window, but he doesn't die part of the execute order 66 though. He's not part of that part. He's, he dies, he falls out of the- Trying to arrest the time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not that, but someone I was would have been nice for them to like Walking Dead it or Game of Thrones it, where you like take a character that everybody loves yep. and see someone just shoot and kill a Jedi and be like, oh, I'm gonna miss that person. Yeah. Again, people are gonna argue with me who are diehard Star Wars fans and be like, well, this person died and this person died. But I'm like, I'm saying in the point where there was no action figures out there for this character that now is dead. Yep. And I wish that would have been a, a nice thing where they 
cultivated a character from episode one to episode three, and then that episode three person died in that experience. Yep. That part. But um, totally. If, it's, if you if you were to saw if anybody sees watch Bad Batch, it's really good. And that's again, they, that's it. Literally happens. The first episode is literally yes. happening during yep. order execute order sixty six. Uh, on the thing so they should do a menu like a, a restaurant at disney world called like order 66 yep <laughs> that would be dude I, i'd not to tangent onto the whole like galaxy's edge thing yeah, but yeah. like oh man i want to go there really 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 bad i know we should find it in the budget of capes and tights to go there i was like that's a vacation yep. i do it <laughs> i want to go out actually actually one of these days we'll have to get out to um California, there's a, there's a place yes. called the Scum and Villainy Cantina, and there's a bar that's Ooh, like supposed great. to be just like yep. the cantina, not off, official authorized license, but it's like you walk in there and you feel like you're in the cantina, which is pretty yep. cool. Uh, Kevin Smith and Mark Bernard record their podcast there, uh, Fat Man Beyond. That's awesome. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's, I would love to go out there and do that because it's just like, imagine getting some blue milk and hanging out there. It would be awesome. Yeah. Um, Here's a, I have a quick question for you yes. that I had written down and I totally should have researched it because there's probably answers. Did you notice, I had never noticed watching it before and it might be it, Palpatine. I, honestly, I can't remember talking to Anakin who says, I can like teach you to talk to Qui-Gon yeah, and, yes, continue, it, it, and continue your training or something. There and was I remember something, being, oh, go ahead. Keep going. No, that's it. And I just remember, I was like, I don't know if I've ever remember that. And they don't ever resolve that. No. It didn't seem like. Well, let me, let me open this file up. Let's see if I can find this file here. So uh, at the beginning of this week, uh, Star Wars week, uh, on Sunday, we released an episode called Star Wars Fun Facts. And yep. in that episode, I believe, I want to say I talked about it in that episode. It's been so long because I recorded it ahead of time. Uh, 20 fun facts. Here we go. And there was one in there about me, uh, quite gone. Let's see here. Let's see if I can find it here. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, Liam Neeson was too tall for Star Wars. Did you know that? Ooh, all the sets, had, all the set doorways had to be uh, changed. It cost $150,000 in extra costs. That's yeah. hilarious. Uh, there were, oh, quite here we go. Oh, uh, no, that's not it. Huh. I wonder, I wonder where I read this. You said the same. It's so funny how you brought this up, but I read it somewhere yep. that he was supposed to be more more present in this film like this film was gotcha. supposed to have him as a force ghost as a force help. ghost okay yeah to help like 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 um obi-wan does in the original trilogy gotcha. to be that support figure that that person to, to try to like i don't remember where i saw it though but yes you're right i, I and it's funny as i read that fact it might have not concluded in my facts, but I did yep. read that fact, and I thought sure. it was funny how much it stood out in the episode when I heard it. I was like, "Oh, there!" That's when I saw that, I had this little glimmer of hope that they'll remember that that was there, and that Qui Gon, played by Liam Neeson, would appear in in Kenobi. And I was don't like, know. "That was, is it that, possible?" No, they don't. Oh, it it's well within the world, but that would blow my mind if if surprise cameo was was Qui Gon. And that would be amazing. And even if it was for one freaking episode, one scene where it's just like, yeah, oh, oh. I really, I really could use your help, Qui Gon. Like, just yep. like, like that kind of thing, or yep. like my my master, my um, a Jedi master that taught me did this that and the other thing, and he appears because yep. that would be badass, and it would be cool to see uh, that. It would be easy. You don't even probably need him. You could just use special effects. I know, honestly. So well, it'd be still, uh, it'd be so good. And it's obviously, hopefully, some secrets are being held out back for us. But sure. according to um. IMDb, he had, doesn't have it on his upcoming credits for yeah. Obi Wan, um, but you do remember he actually was in Rise of Skywalker as a voice in Rise of Skywalker. So that's right, that's right. It's a fun, it's a fun movie, and I, it's like we keep saying with the prequel stuff yeah. that I'm more excited about how they're going to tie it in to what's happening now, like yeah. with the new stuff. Well, I think they were able to do it with Star Wars with um, Obi Wan. Are they? So here's a question. As we're getting close to the end of this, uh, you know, the trilogy, obviously, we're, we're, we're at the end of it. Are they going to use Obi-Wan to repair some of the trilogy, original trilogy? Like, are they going to try? Like, that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of they're going right. to use it too much to edit, to fix some mistakes of the original or the prequel mm -hmm. trilogy and not have it be its own story. Like, those exist. That's the other part I don't like. All these people online about how yep. they need to remake the Rise of the Skywalker whole trilogy and all that crap. No. Like that exists. Just let it go and move on. Exactly. So if you if you treat Obi Wan Kenobi the TV show as its own thing, and it it relies yep. on stuff that came out of that show or that movie those movies, don't try to fix things. I'm just afraid. Do you think they're gonna try to do too much of that, or you think it's gonna be a good mix, or like? 
I mean, I think this is what we were saying with like, I, I'm glad that Kevin Feige is, is he, yeah. not, he's the one that's. Uh, no, it's uh, like, uh, the, the, uh, I, I, Favreau. I, uh, it's Favreau. Yes. Jo- Favreau. That's what I mean. Sorry. I'm yeah. having a yeah. brain fart here. No, I, I, I think by the right person, it can be done right. But I know a hundred percent it's like right now, everything in the franchise is trying to like retcon the prequels Mm -hmm. and like, or set something up that makes the new movies more palatable. And like you said, it's fine. Just let them be. The fans will make the connections. The fans will fix the story in their own head and it'll be fine. But no, I agree with you that I think all the time about let's not become where the whole franchise is about fixing the prequels now. Yeah. The prequels are fine. And it's people like it. People don't like it. Like there's, if you change what you have now, you're going to piss off the kids that we talked about the generational thing about how this star Wars, the prequel, this trilogy is someone's star Wars. It's It's someone out there. This is the thing they love. They don't see how bad it could be or whatever, because they don't relate it to the other ones to them. The graphics and the freaking acting in the first three movies suck. And so this is the, this is their star Wars. And honestly, there are people, kids out there who freaking the Skywalker, the the, the sequel trilogy is their star Wars. So don't, you don't want to confuse the people who are on the periphery who go, I know Obi-Wan Kenobi. No. And the the, don't need to fix anything. Yep. Because the reality is the acting, some of the acting was terrible. Mm Mm-hmm. We didn't like some of the direction, but the stories actually, it's got enough going on to tap into for many, 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 many years. It's a prequel story was great. Yes. It was absolutely. fun. It had all kinds of weird subplots. It, it, it's it's going to be, I, I will watch it for the rest of my life. I, I, I will watch it over and over again. It will be something I'll always relate to and go to because the fact that it's it's a star wars movie no matter how it could have made it horrible it's not the same as we've talked dc yes. movies and things like that where like there are definitely movies right. we won't go back and watch this is you know and there's old marvel movies that i won't go back and watch yeah. there it, this movie this always whenever it's like i feel i have a feeling i want to watch star wars i'm gonna watch them all i'm gonna watch the prequels i'm gonna watch the regular trilogy i'm gonna watch the yep. sequel trilogy it's gonna be the whole thing they're not bad enough for that to happen i think now that we've gone through this entire discussion Agreed. about this that I mentioned at the very off, off the top I didn't it was one of the worst movies I've seen for Star Wars one of the best ones I've seen for Star Wars and I think it's that you nailed it on the head it's it's the acting some acting great storyline great shooting great effects all together makes what it is now I think the other thing I was that I sorry I lost part of your thread there so I probably yeah. am on a tangent but my the thing is like the other thing I always have to stand by with the prequels is George even where they're bad, you can't, like what you're saying, you can't change them too much because they're like literally the dude that created Star Wars vision for the movies. So no, I'm with you hundred percent. I don't want to start messing with that because that's the closest to original source material we'll ever get. I mean, and, and it's all selfish, stupid people out there who think they can do it better than the person who created it in the first place. Yeah. So it, it is exactly. to me, it's not, they were not bad enough. They were definitely not bad enough to have to erase no. either these or the nope. sequel trilogy were not bad enough. You had to erase them from the history uh, books. Nope. They're definitely up there. So I'm excited. I'm really excited for, for Obi-Wan, for anything else that's coming out in Star Wars. I think that it's going to be a yep. fun thing. Uh, the only thing we didn't touch on is, honestly, guys, it's brutal to see Obi-Wan or Anakin kill all those younglings. Like that is a brutal section of this movie is the killing is. of the younglings. And I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it too much because it's brutal. And I think it's, it's one of those weird things that you don't see. Sure. And it's like, it's kind of a family movie. And then you see him murder all these yep. kids is, it's pretty crazy. Um, the last couple of things I wanted to say is, you know, there's a, the, the, the Millennium Falcon makes an appearance in this movie. The Millennium Falcon, uh, in blink of an eye, you'll miss it. There's a sh- establishing shot at the Senate of Curacao after Anakin and Obi-Wan rescue Palpatine and it's coming into port, you can okay. see it flying in, which is kind of cool. Cause like, it's not, Oh, that's awesome. It's possible that's that Han cool. Solo or, or, or even um, what's his face. Uh, we're flying it and it would have been in that time, time yep. frame, which is kind of cool. And that's then awesome. the director of being fun, I said about the character only saying two words when Obi-Wan drops in on general Grievous, he says, hello there. This is also Obi-Wan's first yes. line in episode four when he sees R2-D2 saving yep. Luke from the Tuscan Raiders, which is really cool. I love those small little tidbits of things that come out of these things. Yep. So, um, 
excellent. I, I do think that this movie is, it stands up. It may be up there with Phantom Menace. I mean, Phantom Menace is up there for me. I do think oh, it's yeah, one totally. of the better movies. Yep. It, I think they're all right around the same, honestly. They all have their pluses and minuses. And as a yep. whole thing, the this, this tre- prequel trilogy is not as bad as people say it is. Nope. So. Not at all. In fact, I'm going to get a Jar Jar Binks t-shirt here soon and start bringing Jar Jar Binks back. Make Jar Jar Binks cool again or great again? Is that like good, uh, instead of a exactly. red hat yeah, yeah. for yep. those exactly. people out there, we can get an orange one that says make Jar Jar Binks cool again. Yep. Uh, and uh, we'll talk. Totally. Oh, we're going to talk solo. Jabron and I talk solo on the next episode. And then we are yep. done with Star Wars week, but we'll watch Rogue One in a couple of weeks, a couple of months to watch that. We have plans on the book, Adam, for the winter time to watch the Star Wars holiday special and talk about that as well. So we're excited for that one. Oh, well. God, so, yeah. Without yes, a doubt. Yes. Um, so, Adam, that's it. Episode three in the books. Star Wars Weeks continues on capesandtights.com. Until next time, Adam, may the force be with you. And also with you. <laughs> <laughs>